Uh, what are you telling families about whether the COVID-19 might affect either how well your IBD medication works or will a COVID-19 vaccine cause a flare-up of your IBD? So this is a very common question that's being asked of me. I'm sure the same question is uh, uh, being asked of a number of other nurses. So the question is, you know, how is it going to affect my medication? Um, most of the patients have been on the biologic therapy for a long enough time. So when they are offered the vaccine, like Dr. Kaplan said, just get the vaccine uh, when it's offered. Um, there are some, I work with multiple physicians. Some physicians would say, if you can, if you have luxury of spread, spreading out the days between the, the, the vaccine and the medication, you know, try to do that if you can. But sometimes that luxury is not there, like Dr. Uh, Tragaunic said that, you know, you're offered the vaccine. Sometimes they call you at the end of the day and say, you, you know, you, you need your vaccine. Can, do you want to come in for your vaccine tomorrow? And they've just had an, uh, an infusion of the biologic therapy. And I get this panic email from patients saying, how am I going to do, take care of this? So that's when I respond and say, just go for the vaccine because you may not have another chance for another several weeks. Um, so it's all individualized. It's all individualized based on the patient that uh, the patient is on. And in, in response to how is the IBT medication going to work if I get the vaccine, there's not going to be any difference in the vaccine, in, in the IBD medication, uh, if you get the vaccine. And Anush, if I could add like, one of the, the personal reflections I've had through my clinic is we've actually started a COVID and IBD clinic. So I've been starting to see people who have, who have uh, IBD and who have gotten COVID. Um, and I'm speaking to them in, in my clinic and we review a number of different factors. And one of the things that is seen almost, almost in everybody, particularly the ones who are on immunocompromising drugs like anti-TNF therapy or other infusions or biologics, is that when they get COVID, they've needed to stop their medications to recover from the COVID infection. Um, and, and what's interesting with COVID is a subset of individuals, even healthy individuals get GI symptoms. Uh, and we, we're seeing that as well in a subset of IBD patients when they get COVID, they also have GI symptoms. And now we have to try to differentiate, is it their disease activity? Is it the virus? Is it holding the medications that would otherwise would be treating their IBD? It becomes very difficult and challenging um, and, and so then, and depending on how long you end up delaying your medication, the risk of flaring thereafter becomes that much more increased. And so one of the lessons I've learned from, from this clinic and seeing people who got COVID is just how important it is to get vaccinated and to prevent getting exposed from COVID. I think the biggest risk that an IBD patient has with regards to vaccine is I don't think the vaccine triggering a flare of IBD is a, is a major, it's essentially theoretical and, and unlikely to happen. But if you get COVID, there is the probability that you might end up flaring because you have to hold your medication while you're recovering from the infection. So the majority of the patients that have contacted me after they've had COVID, they've had very mild symptoms and lasted less than seven days. They held the medication just one time or during that time period and they were fine. So luckily I haven't had patients that have you know, been quite sick with the GI symptoms, but they've had very mild symptoms.